AMD has heard our prayers. GPU prices, oh, they're dropping and Sprint is dead. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're going to start off today talking about some new reports that are coming out that get me so excited, okay? Because in case you've been paying attention to AMD's releases, they've been coming out with new chips. They've got Ryzen 7000 series coming out, and the most recent chip that they launched was the Ryzen 7 5800X3D. Well, now there are new reports that AMD might not be done with the current 5000 series and might have some X3D variants of lower end chips. And in fact, a few more overall. AIM4 could potentially still live with a few X3D chips between now and when Ryzen 7000 comes out, or potentially even when Ryzen 7000 does come out and they just keep releasing the X3D variants because they're actually good price to performance. Potentially, I don't know. So this is coming out from a well-known leaker that AMD has this working on. Whether or not they release it, not 100% clear, but there will be further information next month, so around the time of August. But the speculation is that a 5600X3D could be in the works. And if we take a look at the pricing that AMD did with the 5800X3D, we could be looking at roughly $300 for something that would have a 15% performance uplift. Now, this could be good for anybody who wants a faster chip when they're on the current generation. If they're on a B450 or a B550, you could get the 5600X3D. It makes it so that you can stave off that upgrade a little bit. That could potentially be one of the reasons why AMD is choosing to do this. The fact that the next generation will require tons of upgrades. A new motherboard, new set of RAM, potentially even a new power supply. It's going to be rough to go all in on the Ryzen 7000 series chips. So coming out with something that's on the current generation, but really fast, might be a good send off for the AIM4 platform. But this could also have the other handed effect of, let's say a 5600X3D does come out for that $300 price point. Well, then a 7600X stands to reason that it's probably going to be like a little bit more, like $50 more, or it's going to cost the same amount. And then you just you have to choose. I would, I would presume that AMD would make the new thing more expensive because that's just how physics works. But I don't know. I All I know is that I want a 5600X3D. I want a 5900X3D. AMD kind of made it seem like they were going to give us a lot of X3D chips. We only got the 5800X3D, which wasn't even the best chip of the Ryzen 5. That the 5800X was like fine. It wasn't what everybody wanted. Everybody got the 5600X or the 5900 or 5950 for the most part. Anyways, I'm on a rant. Just forget that. Let me know, 5600X3D, are you in? If you're on like a Ryzen 5 1600 AF, upgrading to the 5600X3D, would that shake your bacon? Let me know down below in the comments. And I'm gonna let you know about today's episode sponsor of Hot News. Today's video is sponsored by Heroes of the Dark. Do you like playing games on your phone? Well, Heroes of the Dark might be the perfect game for you because it's a unique blend of the strategy and RPG genres where you can enjoy your favorite in-game features like collecting and strategically deploying your heroes in battle while also talking over and dominating the entire world with your guildmates. Heroes of the Dark has multiple different gameplay elements that you can work with, whether it is the RPG, whether it is the strategy game. There's also PvP as well as PvE, depending on what you want to do at the given time that you're able to play games on your phone. And with decent textures, great particle effects that are happening, the game actually looks really good on my iPhone. If you're into the RPG elements, well, there's three different factions that are fighting for world domination. You got the vampires, the werewolves, and the humans. And to survive, you must recruit, equip, and train your heroes from each faction. And for only those who can master the combined might will prevail in those battles. Playing it for the first time prior to doing this ad spot, I actually was impressed by how much depth and complexity that's in this game. The multiple different elements that you have to balance while you're trying to progress in the campaign made for an experience that I'm sure that you could play for hours on end. And it's available in tons of places for you to play like iOS, Android, and PC. If you're interested in Heroes of the Dark, now's the perfect time to download it. You can either click the link in the video description or scan this QR code that's on the screen and you'll benefit from the great offer 
which is a free vampire Countess Magla in order for you to start your journey in Tenebris. So be sure to check them out at the link in the video description or again, scan the QR code that's on the screen. Big thanks to Heroes of the Dark for sponsoring today's video. Now, shifting gears from hope in what AMD is bringing out to kind of sadness, and it looks like AMD might actually have some huge dips in their revenue in the upcoming year, with speculation being that they might lose $675 million in sales over the next little bit because of number one, the lack of GPU mining, so that they're gonna have a GPU revenue decrease of 7% year on year, but then also things like AMD's PC CPUs, which will decrease 6% year over year thanks to the recession and economic uncertainty that's foiling about and making it so that people are less likely to purchase stuff. However, AMD's chips in things like the consoles are expected to be up quite considerably, making it so that AMD probably will be mostly fine. Again, this is not them taking a loss. This is not necessarily going to make it so that they're an unprofitable company. It's just going to come at the cost of revenue, which we've been kind of expecting, especially as crypto mining has been less viable, less people have been looking towards it. Uh, the GPU prices have come down. GPU manufacturers not likely to sell them as much. AMD could be in for a rough few quarters, as could everybody do based on the news that I'm hearing. But let's not talk about that. But what doesn't look like it's rough is the ecosystem for Risk Five. Well, uh, I'll caveat that by saying that what I'm about to talk about is a little weird. Anyways, Risk Five getting its first laptops. Okay, the world's first Risk Five laptop going up for pre-order. Deep Computing and Excalibite will produce the Roma, which has a quad-core Risk Five processor, up to 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, and then support for Risk Five and most Linux operating systems. This is a big deal. In case you're not familiar with Risk Five, it's an alternative instruction set versus x86 or x64, which is the typical stuff that you use on your daily computing and getting this up and running could mean that the stranglehold of Intel's x86 is not necessarily there for PCs in the future. So pre-orders are now available for this. You can put it in. I don't know if you necessarily should. You could register for it, but the world first risk five. The only issue that I take with this is that it's going to receive a unique NFT to mark the birth of the world's first risk five laptop. Like this seems really cool, but then when you slap NFT on it, you say it's world first i'm just like okay if you're doing an nft that makes it so that i question whether or not you actually have the credentials to do this in the first place i don't know if anybody saw that new like web 3 console that popped up on twitter over the weekend where it was like it's uh it's web 3 you can do 8k you can do ray tracing you can do 120 fps we're gonna develop it in two years and best of all it's web 3 you know why you wouldn't get a steam deck because steam's not web 3 you know why you would get this because it's web 3 you know why it takes microsoft and playstation five years to come out with the console but we can do it in two because it's web freaking three you know why it's the size of a little pancake box because of the blockchain baby anyways that's my skepticism of all things crypto but let's get into the crypto stocks bitcoin up 1.89 percent to be at nineteen thousand seven hundred seventy five dollars i think this is one of the very first times in modern uh hot news history that i've said it's up several percentage points but still below 20 grand Whew, rough market ethereum up 3.6% to be at 1121 and Dogecoin up 0.75% to be at 6.7 cents. But let's keep on the crypto train for a second because there's this report that's coming out, seen it plastered everywhere. No bids on Chevy's first NFT, even though it came with a free Corvette Z06, which you would think a 2023 Z06, why would anybody pass up on this? You get this for free with the NFT? That sounds amazing. NFTs must surely be dead if nobody's buying it, if they get a free the freaking amazing sports car that I absolutely want and am not jealous of whatsoever. The NFT was a digital art of said car in a really nice style. I actually really like the artwork for this. I like the fact that it includes a Z06. And if you look at The Verge and other outlets out there who are reporting on this they're like oh they struck out there were no bids on the nft and then when people were like oh hey sorry we missed the deadline they uh they opened it up again and then again there were no bids but the issue kind of with this reporting is not the fact that there were no bids if this was at a zero bid situation i was watching it i would have put in a bid would have bought ethereum to actually do this the issue is that Chevy had a minimum price that they wanted for this NFT, which was to the tune of 200,000 plus US dollars. So making it a really expensive situation when something like the Z06 is supposed to be, I, I, 
quoting off the top of my head half that. Uh, it's not it's not going to be anywhere close. So they're banking on the actual artwork to be what's making it better. And the fact that you have an NFT, the fact that I had a free car, which just probably for tax reasons for Chevy. So it's not quite that there were no bids because I would have been on it if I could get a freaking free Z06. But the issue, again, was a minimum bid that Chevy wanted, which is why there were no bids. It's not that there was no interest. I would have taken this up in a heartbeat. But a story in the NFT world or crypto world that's a little sadder than that is is uh, Meta is shutting down their Novi cryptocurrency wallet. Just uh, Meta came out, they were like, oh, we have the world's best Libra cryptocurrency. We got Visa and MasterCard and all of these other people on. Everybody pulled out. Facebook was like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna figure this out and get back to you. And then they changed things up and then they rebranded to Meta and then they had, they changed it so it wasn't Libra anymore. Instead it was Diem and which is their in-house cryptocurrency. Anyways, it's shutting down September 1st. It's over uh, July 20th is the final day to add funds. So in case you were looking at adding Libra funds to your Novi wallet, you've got about two weeks to make that final purchase. Why you would do that on a wallet that's sunsetting? Maybe you have more money than I can realize, which in case you do, you should check out the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Reese, what you got for us, bud? Very cool, Reese. Thank you so much. You know what else is cool? Halo is finally getting its co-op on July 11th. Took long enough. What took long enough for Ubisoft is supporting video games. They're shutting down the servers for 15 games this coming September 1st, making it so that you are not going to be able to play the multiplayer version of several of these games, saying that closing the online services for some older games allows us to focus our resources on delivering great experiences for players who are playing newer and more popular titles. The only issue with this, I have no problem with, you know, sunsetting of multiplayer servers. I would prefer it if they made it so that there could be community P2P servers so that necessarily Ubisoft wouldn't be the one hosting it. But the bigger issue is that, uh, you know, there's games like Assassin's Creed 3. Additionally, the installation and access to DLC will be unavailable. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, DLC unavailable. Liberation HD, DLC unavailable. Driver San Francisco, DLC unavailable. Far Cry 3, DLC unavailable. You can shut down your servers. I understand not wanting to have that cost, but you're removing downloadable content that users, your customers paid for, and you're not having a way to offline that for the people who paid for it. This is not just online versions of DLC. This is just DLC will be unavailable for your video game. I think that's absolutely utter rubbish. Ubisoft needs to make a way where you can actually offline the DLC that comes with the games, especially if you paid for it. It's absolutely absurd that you could pay for something and it's an it's a single player game and then they don't allow you to actually have access to that after they shut down their servers ridiculous. I don't care about any of those games because I don't play them, but still not good for the industry. But Google Stadia, great for the industry. They're expanding, did you know? Mexico being added to the list of countries that Google Stadia is now officially supported for the first time since 2020. Google Stadia has added a new country, 23 countries. That's like a little bit of them. Good job, Google, which you can now play Stadia on your Samsung stuff, whether it's TV, whether it's a monitor, hopefully support for the Samsung Smart Fridge coming soon. But Samsung's gaming TV hub is now out with support for Xbox Cloud Gaming, Stadia, GeForce Now, and Amazon's Luna is going to be coming soon. So essentially, the gaming hub will allow you to play cloud gaming on the devices without necessarily needing an external device like a cloud streaming stick or Chromecast or anything like that. It's built into the displays themselves. Neato, I like it. And what I don't like for, for personal reasons that were only wrapped up in stuff that happened on Friday, but Sprint's network is now officially retired. This is part of the T-Mobile acquisition with the two US carriers. T-Mobile acquiring Sprint, shutting down their LTE service on July 1st, as well as shutting down their 3G service on July 1st, which I, Kyler and I came up with a video idea where we were gonna use 3G for something. I'm not gonna tell you about it because it still maybe might happen, but the, the last 3G, Carrier, we could have possibly used shut down the day we had the idea. 
And I was just like, oh golly, this is this is poop. Okay, so if you know of any way that I could get a 3G carrier in the United States, please let me know because I have I have a video idea for UFD Tech if if possible. And NASA has an idea of when they're going to try to start with the Artemis One moon missions, and it's going to be late August, early September. Okay, August 23rd to September 6th is the launch window for Artemis One, especially after the successful wet dress rehearsal that took place back in June. And they said that they'd be foolish not to target that time frame right now they made incredible progress last week you love to see nasa doing good work we should be getting the james webb space telescope pictures sometime soon hyped week for science not a hyped week in case you're a high-end desktop chip enthusiast with threadripper and you know intel's uh what are they called HEDT chips, I forget what they were called, doesn't matter. Anyways, because it's, it's unattainable at this point. Threadripper pricing coming out $6,500 for the 5995WX, the cheapest one's coming in at $2399. I remember when Threadripper was like a really good affordable way to get a little bit extra PCI Express lanes, you could get high-end cores. We had editing systems at UFD Tech where we were using that and now we're stuck using things like Intel's i9 or Ryzen 9 chips rather than going onto the high-end desktop platforms, which I, I guess that makes sense. It's going more workstation than it's going enthusiast, which for me, but how do, how do you do the inverse of a, is it? But for everybody, 50% off on your GPUs, thanks to miners, <laughs> I inhaled some saliva there. Anyways, Bloomberg reporting that GPU prices are plummeting 50% down over the last few months, especially since the end of May, likely thanks to the fact that crypto miners are not as profitable as they were. The obvious economic uncertainty that's happening with people having to sell things off. And so it just makes everything cheaper. Yes, cheaper things. You know what didn't inflate graphics cards? We had that earlier. So now inflation can't touch us. I really hope I don't come to regret those words. Anyways, I'm not going to regret ending this episode of Hot News because I'm done with the tech news. I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news out on the internet tomorrow, my friends.